So our economy is in a bit of a situation right now. We're not quite in a recession yet, but many experts are saying that we're well on our way to one. But you've got to take this with a grain of salt because that's what they said last year and the year before that and the year before that. Some would even go as far to say that we're already in a recession. And I'm gonna tell you why that's wrong later on in the video. So the bottom line is recessions are unpredictable. And with that said, with this current economic crisis going on, and it is a crisis with all these layoffs going on and closures, it's important to think about how to prepare for a recession. And that's what we're gonna dig into in this video. But even more importantly than that, we need to educate ourselves on what exactly a recession is and about our current economic situation. So the actual definition of a recession is when the economy declines for two quarters in a row, six months in a row, while trade and industrial activity are reduced, which means that we can't define a recession until the six months have passed. And right now we're in what is called an economic downturn, which is actually something that's perfectly normal and healthy within an economy. It's basically the, the valleys and peaks that you see within the stock market on a daily basis. Now what makes this economic downturn so unique and so different and rather difficult in this entire situation is that it's controlled by the pandemic itself. Because the pandemic has caused the closures of all the non-essential businesses and because it's caused all these people to be laid off and it's triggered this chain reaction, that is why people are worried that we're going into a recession. And rightfully so, because we don't know how long this is gonna last. And if it does last six months, it could potentially cause a recession. Not to mention the fact that a lot of people expect this to get much worse before it gets better. And our really only hope to alleviate this is a vaccine or some type of treatment for the virus that is spreading and has caused this pandemic. And when you consider the amount of time it actually takes to effectively do that, then you kind of see the worry about the recession. But once again, no one actually knows when a recession is gonna hit. They're incredibly difficult to accurately predict on a consistent basis, which is why every single article that said there was gonna be a recession every year previous to this were wrong. But one thing we do know for sure is this, another recession will hit at some point in time. And it's important to know how to prepare for a recession so you can be prepared whenever that happens. Now, the first thing you need to understand about preparing for a recession is that they're incredibly unpredictable, like I stated before. There's gonna be a lot of people, a lot of know-it-alls who think they know when the recession is gonna hit and they can have very good basis for their predictions. They can have very educated guesses. That doesn't mean a thing. And I just want to drive home that if we could predict a recession on a consistent basis accurately, wouldn't we have figured out how to stop every single recession or at least lessen their impact? That's what I would think. And since they're unpredictable, it's best to always be prepared and not just start preparing when somebody announces that they think there'll be a recession. That is my point. So another thing is you're going to want to absolutely make sure that you're level-headed. And specifically, I'm talking about certain categories that you need to be level-headed in. You want to definitely make sure that you're level-headed about your groceries, your bills, your rent. You want to make sure you're level-headed about your debt, your investments, your 401k, your extra earnings. And you definitely want to make sure you're level-headed about hitting the like button for the algorithm. I say you need to be level-headed because it's super easy to freak out and buy all the toilet paper that grocery stores have to offer. You definitely want to be level-headed about your bills, your rent, your groceries because those are the three main things you need to survive. Now, when it comes to rent and times of recession, especially even times like this right now with all these closures going on and all these people laid off, there has to be a certain amount of communication. Now, they just passed the bill that there's no evictions due to lack of payment so long that you communicate with your landlord. So that's why we need to be level-headed about your rent. Can you actually afford your rent? If you can't, if your streams of income have been cut, what can you do about it? You can talk to your landlord and say, hey, this is how I'm impacted, this is how much I can pay, or just tell them you can't pay at all. Show proof, right? Be level-headed about it. Don't freak out, because when you freak out, bad things happen. And really the same thing with all your other bills. And look into what they're doing to look out for you in this situation as well. Be level-headed in terms of your 401k. Please don't be that person who takes out all of their 401k in hopes that it would save them some money. Because once the market gets back to normal, you're going to see your money jump right on up. So yeah, you're losing money now, but in the future, it's just going to skyrocket because that's how the stock market works. Same thing with your other investments. Don't take all of your money out. I mean, sometimes you obviously need to cut your losses, but... 
Don't just, especially in a 401k where everything's diversified, don't just take everything out. Come on. Same thing with your banking. This isn't 1920 anymore. There's no need to take all of your money out of the bank because your money automatically depreciates when you do that. It's not gaining anything that the bank would be putting towards it. Especially if you have a high yield savings account and you do that, then you're literally missing out on all the interest you would have been earning on the money that was in there. So that's why it depreciates. When it comes to your debt, you want to definitely be level-headed. I made a whole video last week about should you pay off your debt or should you save money? You got to think about that. Is your debt high interest or no? That's what you need to think about. I'm not going to go into details about that because I made a whole video about it and you can check it out right up here. You definitely want to be level-headed with your extra earnings. So, for example, the stimulus package that most people are getting, as well as tax returns that most people have gotten already, that is extra income right there. But a lot of people do not use it wisely. Think about longevity when it comes to this. Think about prioritizing what you need to prioritize. And in most people's cases, it's going to be savings because we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know what other closures are going to take place because of this. I mean, earlier I mentioned that a lot of non-essential businesses have closed, but even essential businesses are being forced to close. Some essential businesses are making the executive decisions to shut down for the safety of their people. And any other side income that you have, just be very cautious with it. Just don't go out and splurge or go on the internet and splurge because you can't really go out anymore, but you know what I mean. Don't splurge on things you don't need in this time. Take advantage of the fact that you have more time to think about what's going on and make better decisions that way. The third thing is be proactive. Have money already saved up. Like I said, if you already know that we can't predict a recession, don't wait for a recession to happen to freak out and think, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Well, if you would have saved in the beginning, you wouldn't have been in the situation. Now, think about it like this. If you don't really have a savings right now, now is a great time to start building one. And I get it. Some people are financially impacted by this. The whole point of this is so that when stuff like this happens, we can already be prepared. So what you're going to want to do is save up $1,000 first. That's going to be your first milestone. For a lot of people, that is very easy to do. But then again, on the other side of the spectrum, it's difficult for a lot of people to do because of bills and the cost of living and family and all this other stuff. And all these factors mixed up. But I guarantee you, if you're watching this video right now, you can save up $1,000. After saving up $1,000, you want to build it up to three to six months worth of expenses. And if you really want to go crazy, build up three to six months worth of paychecks, which are going to more than cover your expenses as long as you're not living paycheck to paycheck. Being proactive is one of those things that I think is going to save a lot of people in predicaments like this because we look at all these people who have been laid off and who are now getting unemployment checks, right? And they did just increase the unemployment checks by $600 a week, which is a lot, right? But it's still, for some people, it doesn't quite hit to where they were making at their jobs. Meaning if they were living paycheck to paycheck or if they were living and just cutting it very close, it's going to be very hard for them to pay all their bills on time. So make sure you do all of that so that you're not caught off guard in the middle of an economic crisis. And I hope you guys are catching on to the theme here is literally just controlling what you can control because you can't control a recession. You can try to help it out, but one single person is not going to be able to resolve a recession. You can't control the fact that there's a recession. You can't control the fact that the stock market crashed. You can't control a lot of things that are going on. You can't control the layoffs that are happening, right? What can you control? You can control what you do to protect yourself from financial crisis. Fourth. Another thing you're going to want to make sure you do or don't do is make sure that your high interest debt does not eat you alive. That is chaos. Think about it like this. You've just been laid off. You're getting unemployment checks. You have some money saved up and you're able to pay your bills, but you have debt that is literally eating you alive. Let's say you have a couple thousand dollars in credit card debt. And that interest rate is at 20% and it is just destroying you. You're unable to pay it back because of the, you know, the resources that you have right now. You don't have a lot of them and you have to be strategic about how you use them. Make sure before a recession hits, make sure that while you're in good standing financially, that if you have any debt of any kind that is high interest, 
It could be a hundred dollars credit card debt. That stuff adds up quick when you consider that credit cards range between like 14 and 24 percent of interest. So you got to think about it. How am I going to be ahead of the game when it comes to this? I don't want to have any credit card debt. And that should be your mentality going forward, if I'm completely honest. Now, if you have lower interest debt, that's obviously not going to be a priority because you can pay the minimum payment and not have to worry about it growing that much. But paying just the minimum payment on a credit card and the interest rate is still going up, each time you pay the minimum payment, it's not putting that much of a dent in your debt as opposed to your lower interest rates. This is a big one that I want anybody who has extra money to actually think about and not listen to a bunch of other gurus say what they have to say about this. Think of recessions and any type of economic downturn or crisis or whatever you want to call it. Think of these as opportunities to invest in the stock market. It is an incredible time to invest. And a lot of people tell you, oh, well, that's not, it's not a great time to invest. It's a horrible time to invest. That's not smart investing. You're just investing because everything's on sale. Think about what you just said. Everything's on sale. This is literally like Black Friday, but for stocks, which are long-term investments, or they should be made in terms of a long-term investment, and they will in the future bring you money. Now, of course, you're going to want to do your research. You're going to want to understand you know, the flow of it. You're going to want to know, you know, in a year, in the past five years, how has the stock performed? Does it, tip, does it typically trend upward or down? You want to look at these things before you put your money into it. And you're going to want to make sure that your money that you put into it is disposable income, i.e. income that you don't need, that you can actually lose. It's just like when you go to the store on Black Friday and you get a TV that would have been worth $350, but you get it for $210. That's a great investment at that time, especially if you had the 350 to buy the TV initially, but you waited until it went on sale to get it because the value of that TV is $350, but you got it for $210. Same thing for a stock of the same price range. You get it for way less, and then guess what? The only difference is this is a really good investment. The TV is a liability, by the way, but this is a good investment because of the simple fact that it's going to go up in value over time and it's going to put money in your pocket over time. Right now, it's low and it looks like it's going to keep dropping. Okay, but it's going to come up sometime. So like I said, if you have the money to do it, please do it. It's a great idea. And something I really want to bring home about preparing for a recession is you can't listen to everybody. Don't even just take my word for it. Do your own research. You know, go by your experiences. Go buy what you think is best for you because I'm not a financial advisor and I don't know everything. And I can guarantee you the other people on the internet sure don't know everything when they try to say that, um, when, when they say that recessions are coming. And they can be very calculated, very educated when it comes to this, but no one can predict a recession. It just doesn't happen. Like in the past 166 years or something like that, there's only been like 33 recessions. And how many times of those 33 do you think they were actually predicted? So I think I've babbled long enough. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. And that way you can really change your life. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my other videos. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you like this video and you want to see more. Thanks so much for watching.